Hey, what's up guys? This is Technical Tim here, and I want to say thank you to everyone so much who's been liking all my videos and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, I really appreciate it if you did. And if um, any of these videos this week get 50 likes, I'll go live on Saturday and give all of my picks away for free. And I pretty much talk about all the fights anyway, but I'll, I'll give like all my props and everything. And it will be right before the event, so I'll kind of be more taped up on everything and kind of geared up so um so yeah it, it'll be cool to be able to go live and and i'll just be able to answer any questions you guys have too about any of the fights um or any future fights but so yeah um let's get 50 i think the last video is close to there already so you can go like that one too um but just like an overall theme on this card like if we're looking at it there and this is the uh the Sanya's Lee card in Rochester, and this is part two, and I'm going to talk about two more fights today, but before I do that, there's a, like, so we, we've been profitable this month, guys, like, I think we're up, like, 12 units this month, or something in May, and, um, we, there's a lot of just big favorites on this card, and then there's a lot of just, like, kind of, kind of like the Megan Anderson and Spencer fight, just kind of fights that I don't think are worth a play. Like, I'm going to have action on this card, don't worry. But I'm going to have less action than usual. Um, because I don't, you don't want to, like, we've made hard-earned units this month. And we don't want to give that away. That is the difference between a good and bad better, in my opinion, is the good better knows when to stay away. And the bad or casual better will kind of give away units, like, being able to stay away is extremely important because everyone kind of can make a good bet. Like there's times when just a line is off and a good better and a bad better can recognize that. But the rec the recognition of the way offs is really what distinguishes yourself, in my opinion. So you just kind of need to know when to lay off. And there's plenty of layoffs on this card, but it's still important to analyze them and... um understand why they're layoffs but there's also like I'm gonna have some action on this card just not as much as usual and there's nothing wrong with that and there's a card coming up I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna tell you guys the fights yet but there's a card on this uh Chicago card by the way I'm I live in Chicago and um so I might actually be going to this event I haven't decided um the girlfriend and I have to talk about that but she might go to um but I have I'm gonna have a cup two max bets on this card that I know of and probably four or five plays. And um, so yeah, just wanted to point that out. So big cards like this come, good opportunities for betting. So take them when they come, but don't force bets like on this card. There's some to play, but don't go crazy. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, I just wanted to rant that rant about that because that's important. But let's talk about one fight real quick. Um, it's the Mikel Pereira fight and the Danny Danny Roberts. If you haven't watched Pereira, he's a crazy fucking wild man striker. He looks like he's like performing acrobats and like acrobatic moves in the fucking circus. I'm not even joking. He uh, like he'll do a backflip off the cage when and land on top of his opponent who's like if they're in guard or something. Like he he's he's pretty crazy. He just does a lot of like like spin kicks, like everything, and so it kind of makes the the fight a little weird to call because it's hard to know. A lot of those strikes are kind of low percentage, so it's hard to know if they're actually gonna land or not. But just to give like a basic breakdown, he, he's wild like that. But when I, if he does like he's powerful and he can land, like when he just focuses on basic shit, which I think he should do here like straight punches, he can land them. And, and he's not a, he's not like a terrible fighter. His ground game, it's kind of, it doesn't look too polished or anything. I think technically he's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, but like, like I said, guys, I don't go by belts. I go by what I see on tape and he doesn't look all that good, like all that great of a grappler to be quite honest. But, um, he doesn't look like terrible down there either, but most of his fights kind of play out on the feet. And, um, yeah. So, if he sticks to basics, he can, I think he just has a higher chance of landing clean in this fight. And Danny Roberts doesn't have the best chin, so he should, he should focus on, on, um, 
strikes that are higher percentage to land. Not flashy shit, but he's a flashy guy, so he's probably going to be throwing a lot of shit. Um, but another reason why it's kind of hard to know how well he'll do here and why I'm not going to bet this fight, because it's hard to precisely break down where the line should be, is because he's fought a lot of bad competition. Like, if you look, like, I watched all his fights. Like, he's fought, like, four and five guys, three and two guys. Um, you know, he lost... This fight, this guy kind of walked him down, which I think Roberts might be able to do, and land, like, technical straight punches. Um, so that's kind of, like, a red flag for him going against Roberts. But, yeah, like, O and O guys... Um, <sighs> I mean, he's fought a few guys with experience, but just, like, watching some of these guys, they weren't very good. So it's hard to know how good he is. And so it's like, yeah, some of his, like, cool strikes might work on lower-tier fighters, but I don't know if it'll actually work on Roberts. So, like, it's hard to know. Like, he, this guy could obviously land. Like, Pereira could obviously land a big strike and, and win um, and get, like, a big knockout, but this was a fight that kind of concerned me, and I feel like Danny Roberts could maybe walk him down and land straight punches, and, like, he, Danny Roberts won't be doing the flashy stuff. He should go straight right down the middle and just not worry about, try not to worry about the, um, like, the, the flashiness. Just do your best on trying to avoid them and stay, stay basic, and I think Roberts can probably land clean here. Because Perea doesn't have the best striking defense. He can get hit clean a lot. I've seen it in a lot of fights. But at the same time, Danny Roberts gets hit clean all the time, too. I mean, Nordin Taleb knocked him out with just, like, a wild kick. Um, even Claudio Silva landed heavy on him at times. So it's like... I would probably... I, like, I, I think I favor Roberts here, because, but it's hard for me to know just because, like... Herrera th throws such crazy shit. It's so unpredictable to know if it's actually going to land. But I like to focus on the higher percentage strikes. Like, that's what I'll give kind of deference to. And Danny Roberts throws straighter, cleaner punches. And so I'll give him the edge there. And I'll also give him an edge on the fact that he actually is fighting UFC competition. And Pereira, like, he's fought a lot of terrible fighters. So, like, I'm going to lean towards the UFC better in here. Not that I'm, I'm not playing Roberts. Fuck no. Um, he, he still might get caught because he is hittable and he is chinny. But, yeah, that's, like, really all I have to say on this. It's just... And, and Roberts doesn't really... He doesn't really um, go for takedowns. He's never landed one in his UFC career. Although, if you watch his fights, he will get top position. And they, the fight metric might not count it as, like, a takedown. But it's usually, like, scrambles off kind of a grappling sequence near the cage. Um, but I see most of this playing out on the feet. But I could see it going on the floor. Like, Roberts is kind of wild and Pereira is really fucking wild. So I could see some scramble and someone ending up on top. And it would probably be Roberts. But, um... Yeah, like, the striking, I'm just going to lean and kind of give deference to the UFC veteran because I think he throws the cleaner and straighter shots and the higher percentage to land. And because he's actually proven against legitimate UFC competition where Pereira's not. So, I'm, But I'm not going to play this fight. I'm just going to stay away. And let's look at what the odds are right now. Um, Danny Roberts, minus 250. So that's, I think that's 72%. Oh, nice. I tacked this in before the video. Yeah, so it's 71.5%. Um, so you have to think, Robert. I, I like to have like a 6 to 8 percentage um, edge over the bookies or maybe even higher at times. Obviously, you, if you get like 20%, that's great. And that's when you start max betting or something. But um, you, so I would want Roberts to win about 8 out of 10 to see his implied odds at 80% to be comfortable playing him. And I just don't see that here. Um, he's, he's hittable and Pereira offensively can land pretty well, but Pereira is very hittable himself. But let's look at uh, Pereira's odds right now. Plus 210. So you got to think for... Pereira, his odds to win are like 4 out of 10. Um, I would probably... Like... 
I would probably be more comfortable if I'm not playing this fight, guys, and don't fucking play it. Just stay away. This is crazy shit. Um, it's a shit show of a fight. This isn't the type of fight you, you really want to have money on, but I would probably play Pereira, like, if I was forced to play, just so, like, I didn't have to risk as much because the return on Roberts just isn't high enough, and at least you get, like, double your money if Pereira, like, lands um, a big shot. But, like, do you put Pereira at 4 out of 10? I, I don't know if I do. Like, I think the odds are probably right based on the information that we know. Um... But at the same time, like, either guy could win. If Pereira landed a KO here, I would not be shocked. And if Danny Roberts just kind of walked him down and fucked him up, I wouldn't be surprised either. But I'm going to not – I'm not going to um, play it, and I'm going to give respect to the UFC veteran. But um, I, w I wouldn't play Roberts either. I, I wouldn't play fucking Roberts at 72% implied odds over anyone. So that's all I have to say about that fight. Sorry, I was kind of going back and forth, but it's just – it's kind of a hard fight to break down because it's just Roberts, like kind of a, a walk you down kind of basic technical striker um, versus a wild, a wild man. And he, he throws, he throws backflip kicks. It's hard to fucking know like what's going to ha happen, but yeah. So I don't know. Fuck that fight. I don't even know why I'm still talking about it. I'm not playing it, but the next fight is much more interesting. And this is one I actually think I can provide a lot of technical analysis because this is an intriguing fight. It's Ian Heinish and Antonio Carlos Jr. We all know Antonio Carlos Carlos Jr. He is a take you down, kind of get your back. He likes a rear naked choke. Um, he was the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion at the brown belt level. And he's a good grappler. Like, he is. But if you you can... Like, like he, he's dangerous kind of early, but he will slow down a little bit, and you can stifle his submissions, and he's not nearly as dangerous with his subs off his back, and you can really see that in the, the Kelly fight and the Cummins fight especially. And one thing I do want to point out, like, if you look at some of the guys Antonio Carlos Jr. has been subbing, it's like like Jack Marshman, like, yeah, he beat Tim Bosch. Like, I ha we haven't seen him just dominate really, really good fighters. So I just wanted to point that out, but I do think um, he's obviously got a path to get a quick sub here against Heinish. But if he doesn't get a quick sub, it might get rough for him. I, I just want to point that out. But um, Heinish, let's get a Heinish real quick. So really the path to victory for me, for Carlos Jr., is probably a first half of the fight submission. Um, if he doesn't get it, I have a feeling he's going to lose. And so his odds are at minus 185. So that's implied like 63%. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't play Antonio Carlos Jr. here. Like if you want to play him, play his submission, obviously don't play him at minus 185. You could probably get a submission at a little bit of a plus money, but I, I wouldn't want to play him here. I, I just think, I think those odds are, are a little off here, but Submissions are usually front heavy, and I could see him getting a quick sub. Like, it would not shock me at all. It's a huge win condition. Like, it, it's pretty much 90% of his win condition is, like, a first half of the fight submission, in my opinion. Like, he could maybe do what he did to Vittori and kind of rally late and, and win a type of decision. But I tend to think Heinish will actually win if this fight plays out. But Heinish is kind of like a, he's kind of a freestyle fighter. He's a two-time state champ in wrestling. He, he's got a, he, he's a decent wrestler. He's not, I would expect a two-time state champ in a Midwestern state like him to have a little better wrestling than him, but it's still good. Like, it's still fine. Um, but he had a short notice fight against Cesar Ferreira. And Cesar Ferreira, I, I think Antonio Carlos Jr. is a lot more dangerous than Ferreira. Um, although... Ferreira's takedowns are probably better than Antonio Carlos Jr., in my opinion. But I think once Antonio Carlos Jr. gets you down, I think he, he's a lot more dangerous. But I wanted to point that out. But in this fight, what I saw from Heinish and what I saw in other fights is if you're going to do like a takedown... When Heinish is going up against a guy like Antonio Carlos Jr., a take-you-down, sub-you type of guy... He totally has the ability to stop takedowns, and if he does get taken down, push the opponent's shoulders down and to get their arms below his knees. 
and then use a left post hand to get back up. Like I've seen him do it, but I've also seen him do some dumb shit. That's kind of a red flag versus Antonio Carlos Jr. Such as he'll jump guillotines. I don't think he'll do that here, but who fucking knows? Um, he, he didn't have time to prepare for this fight against Ferrer. It was short notice, so the guillotine jumping, like, maybe if he had a full camp, he would have thought not to do that in that type of situation. But I've seen him jump guillotines before. But also, when he's on his back, he, he'll also go for, like, arm bars and shit. And it's caused problems because a guy like Ferreira or a guy like Antonio Carlos Jr., well, the, you're, it's going to be tough to armbar Antonio Carlos Jr. So it just gives Antonio Carlos Jr. an easy opportunity to like shuck off, get to side control, and then take your back because Heinish will then give up his back if you pass his guard. Like Heinish should just retain guard on Antonio Carlos Jr. and immediately start posting with his feet and his hands off Antonio Carlos Jr. to stand up. And he's capable of doing that. It's just I've also seen him go for submissions from guard that could totally fuck him here because it's probably going to be an easy pop passing opportunity for Antonio Carlos Jr. I've also seen Heinish have really good takedown defense at times. Like, he has, he has good understanding of takedown defense. But he'll also kind of be wild at times and he'll kind of be charging at you. And you, if you time a shot, well, you can get him down. But if he, if he comes in with a smart game plan here and it's just super, he has his timing ready um, as far as takedown defense goes. And is just ready to dig under hooks off Antonio Carlos Jr.'s double leg. He could win this fight easily, but he does have Mark Montoya in his corner. Who's the biggest fucking idiot ever when it comes to grappling preparation. Uh, go watch the Anders Khalil Rountree fight, FYI, for that one. But also just listening to that that guy's corner advice, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about when it comes to grappling. I mean, he is a Muay Thai coach, and I'm sure they have other coaches for that, but I've seen a lot of Factory X fighters not have the best game plan when it comes to grappling. So it kind of bothers me, but Heinish does have the tools to win this fight. It's a matter of him implementing them. And the thing is, if he does implement them, I think he's going to fuck Carlos Jr. up. Because um, I think he is the better gas tank here. I think he could start walking Antonio Carlos Jr. down if he survives the first round and kind of eat him up. And one thing, another path to victory for him, not just like lasting and then kind of like beating up Antonio Carlos Jr. on the feet and just um, outworking him as the fight goes on, he could get takedowns here and... He has ruthless grounded pound. Like, we've seen it throughout his career. And that's what Heinish likes to do a lot. But I'm, I'm guessing he won't want to play with fire right away. But I think that would be a good way to stop the grappling of getting taken down early is get your own takedowns. That's what I think he should do. But Antonio Carlos Jr. is not nearly as effective off his back. Like, we've seen Cummins really fuck him up and Dan Kelly fuck him up. We've seen Vittori in the second round get top position and beat him up. And I think Heinish can do that here. So the fact that I see paths to victory for Heinish, such as like surviving the early grappling storm and then outpacing him later, and but that has to really do to do with like his preparation. He, he's capable of doing it, but he has to implement the game plan. And the fact that he could get top position and just fuck Antonio Carlos Jr. up there and float on top, I think he's worth a small play. So I'm going to play, I'm playing like a really small half unit on Heinish at plus 160 because I think those odds are a little bit off. But because Antonio Carlos Jr.'s main path to victory is a first round submission, in my opinion, I'm holding off on actually going heavy on Heinish and just playing a half a unit. But if Heinish survives that first round, I'm going to put more on him after that first round. And he could be like an underdog or even like, even if he's like even money, I would that's the biggest danger zone for him, that first round. And I think he can really fuck Antonio Carlos Jr. up if the fight goes on and he survives that first round. So don't do a huge pre-fight action play on this. Go small. I went like a, I just did like a half unit. But be ready to live bet in this fight. Because if he survives that first round, I think he's going to fuck Antonio Carlos Jr. up. Antonio Carlos Jr. might get an early sub. But um, it is what it is. And it won't ruin our night. So... Thank you so much for listening, and I'll pump more videos throughout the week, and I'll have more plays throughout the week, but um, thanks so much. See you guys.